Hello and welcome to my channel and video 2 of the series. I'm Peter Lippmann, Acker Grandpatzer. Now in this video I'm going to talk about an extremely important attacking concept called the principle of maximum activity. Now this is a term that was coined by Igor Smirnov in his courses on the Remote Chess Academy. Please note that I will be using this term throughout all of my videos. Now essentially the principle states that when you have reached a critical position you should always look for the most forward move. Essentially you should divide the board into two and look for moves in your opponent's half of the board. Move your pieces as forward as possible. So as already mentioned simply divide the board into two and look at moves in your opponent's half of the board. Okay. Now, I will firstly start by giving a few simple examples, for example in the opening stages, and then I will move on to more um, sophisticated examples later on in the video. Now, the principle of maximum activity can apply to all phases of the game. It can apply to the opening, the middle game, and the end game. It can also relate to pieces, and it can also relate to pawns. Now let's start by giving a few simple examples. Now there are many examples in the opening that follow uh, the principle of maximum activity. For example, let's take e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. This is the Spanish opening, or the Rey Lopez opening. Please note that the bishop has moved to its most forward square possible, which is b5. Obviously it can't go to a6, otherwise uh, that would lose the bishop. Okay, so bishop b5 is the most forward move. Okay, let's check a few other openings. The Sicilian, for example, c5, knight f3, knight c6. This is the Rossolimo variation. There you, you can see also that the bishop mo has moved to its most forward square possible in the opponent's half of the board. Okay, let's check out some openings for black. So you have d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, that's the Nimzo Indian. There again, the bishop moves on to the opponent's half of the board. Uh, to its most forward square possible. You also have its cousin, the Bogo Indian, knight f3, e6, knight f3, and bishop b4 check. That is in accordance with the principle of maximum activity. Okay, let's look at a few other examples. Uh, d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, uh, for example, knight f3 here, and then bishop b4, that's the Ragazin uh, defense. There, as already mentioned, the bishop moves to its most forward square possible in the opponent's half of the board. Okay, let's look at a few other examples. Let's flip the board. Um, okay, the four knights, for example, e4, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, uh, knight f6, and one of the main moves is bishop b5. Um, that's the Spanish four knights, for example. Let's move on to one of the most popular variations in chess. e4, uh, c5, knight f3. I'm talking about the Sicilian Najdorf. d4, c takes, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, Knight a6. Now, in accordance uh, with the principle, um, th the bishop on f1 should go to c4, which is its most forward square possible, and the bishop on c1 should go to g5, which is also in accordance uh, with the principle of maximum activity. Please note that bishop g5 is actually the main line, whilst the bishop c4 variation, which is called the Fischer variation, is also one of the main principal main lines, which was used a lot by Short against uh, Gary Kasparov in the World Championship match in the 90s. Okay. A last example. Let's just. Uh, 
Okay, e4, knight f6. <clears throat> Obviously, um, one of one of the moves is knight c3, but the main line here is simply e5, which attacks the knight and pushes a pawn in the opponent's half of the board. It's the most forward move, it's the most aggressive move, and it's the best move according to theory. Okay. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is that even if you don't know theory, okay, if you're not aware of uh, the best theoretical lines, often you can find the best move in many positions if you understand the base principles of a chess game. Now, one of the base principles, one of the best base principles, is the principle of maximum activity. Now, every chess player likes to sacrifice or finish a game with a beautiful combination. However, an important question is the following. How do we arrive at a situation on the chessboard where a combination occurs? The answer, of course, is by following the principle of maximum activity. You should focus on your opponent's half of the board and ask yourself, how can I go to that territory and make some damage? Hopefully, to take or attack something. However, in most of the positions, there's no direct way to start an attack right away. What do you then? In that case, you need to prepare your attack for the future. And in order to do so, you need to activate your position. Always focus on your, on your own army, your own pieces, and you should think about how you should maximize their power. How can you activate them? And how can you put them onto the squares that, where they will be controlling the greatest quantity of squares on the chessboard? Now, to move on to a more slightly more sophisticated example, I'm going to show you a game uh, by Gary Kasparov in 1979, um, and we're going to forward it to the um, 14th move. So this was um, a Queen's Indian. Gary Kasparov had the white pieces, so bishop b4, knight bd2, castling e3, b6, Bishop d3, bishop b7, so we're going to forward it. This is all theory, or was theory at the time. c takes, bishop takes, b4, c5, rook c1 was played, c takes, knight takes, and knight e5. Now, I'd like you to think about this position, and um, obviously the knight on e5 is attacking the bishop on d3. But where should the bishop go? What is the best move in this particular position? Now, if you follow the principle of maximum activity, you could easily find the best move. I mean, white has many options. He could go to e2, he could go to c2, he could go to uh, b1. Uh, there, are, there are many moves in the position. But however, if you follow the principle of maximum activity, which states that the bishop should go to the most forward square available, then you can easily find the best move in the position, which is bishop a6. Okay, and that was the move that was played. It is the best move in the position, and um, Gary Kasparov soon won the game. Okay? Now, I would like to show you a game um, from one of the greatest attacking proponents of the game, and one of my favorite players of all time. It's Michael Tal and the game illustrates the concept very well. Mikhail okay. Tala had the white pieces and he was paying, playing against a Bulgarian chess player, uh, Georgi Tringov. So Tal had white and um, he started off with his favorite move, e4. Uh, g6 was played, that's the modern defense. Okay, so uh, Tal takes the center of course, d4 is the best move. Bishop g7, knight c3, d6. Uh, note that um, the knight on c3 um, is square, so it doesn't go to d2. Okay, it doesn't go to a3, it goes to knight c3 where it controls the most quantity of squares. Okay, and it's the best move and it's the most aggressive move. So d6 was played, so this is a modern. Tal uh, develops the knights, knight bef knights before bishops, he follows uh, these principle in the opening of knights before bishops. So knight f3 is the most forward square for the knight, c6, and having developed his knights, now develops his bishop, so the most forward square available. So he played bishop g5, um, and queen b6 was played. 
I'm not sure whether queen b6 um, is such a sensible move, uh, trying to go pawn grabbing against such a, a great tactician such as Michael Tal, but that's what happened, and uh, I think he paid a heavy price for it in the end, because he ended up losing in 17 moves. So queen d2 was played, um, the queen protects the knight, it invites uh, black to take the pawn on b2, which he happily does, queen takes b2, rook b1, attacking the queen, which is, yeah, which now has to go to a3. Uh, note the point of queen d2 was to protect the knight, so that after queen takes b2 occurred rook b1, a knight on c3 is protected. So Tal continues uh, with the principle of maximum activity. He develops uh, the bishop on f1 to its most forward square possible. Note it can't go to b5 or a6, obviously, because it would be captured by a black pawn. So he goes to the most forward available square, which was bishop c4. Queen a5 was played, um, and Tal simply castles, puts his king into safety, and connects rooks. E6 was played, E6 was played, and Tal uh, continues by activating all of his pieces. He plays rook f e1. Not only does he activate the rook, but note that he also shadows the black king, like that. Okay. A6 was played, and um, here Tal played bishop f4, which uh, this is an interesting moment actually, because uh, the computer stockfish uh, does um, think that the best move here is e5, which is very interesting, which is actually, note that this is a critical position, and e5 is in accordance with the principle of maximum activity. It moves a pawn into the opponent's half of the board. Now perhaps why Tal may have rejected this was because of d5, however, which uh, does seem to um, close the position somewhat. However, after the brilliant uh, knight e4, attacking uh, the queen, uh, white is simply winning, because after queen takes d2, there's, I don't think there's any other move here, uh, white has an intermediary check, followed, for example, after um, king d7, followed by capturing the queen with the knight, and um, essentially the F f7 pawn is going to drop, so this is a completely uh, winning position for white. Okay, but okay, I mean, Tal didn't play this, he played uh, bishop f4 here, which is also a good move, you know, it's the engine's second uh, choice, and um, here I think his opponent starts to go wrong, and um, his opponent played e5, okay. Possibly the best move is simply retreating the queen to d8 and I think we have a game, however, it is clear that white has a clear advantage here. Okay. So e5 was played, I think that was a bit desperate on black's side. Um, you know, I think he was getting a bit desperate, he sees all of uh, white's pieces developed, he's castled, his rooks are connected, um, all his pieces are on the most aggressive squares, and I think he may have started panicking somewhat. Okay, so de was played. Um, opening lines in the position, and now the principle of maximum activity again, you know, um, Tal played the brilliant, absolutely brilliant, instead of retreating um, the bishop, or moving the bishop, Tal plays the brilliant queen d6, a move in the opponent's half of the board, and um, after queen d6, uh, black is busted, okay? Simple as that. Okay, note that the queen is in an extremely powerful position. Uh, there are all kinds of tactics um, being threatened. Now, obviously this is a peace sacrifice, and it's a correct one. What happened, for instance, if black takes the bishop on f4, which is not the move that was played? The best move here for, um, for white would be uh, knight d5, and here black can categorically resign. Well, for a start, knight c7 is unavoidable. It cannot be prevented. And for second, um, if black takes the bishop, you simply take with the e-pawn check, 
and um, getting mated. Knight e7, queen takes e7 is checkmate. Okay, so let's go back. So knight d5 is the best move, and it wins on the spot after taking the bishop on f4. So e takes. Um, um, e takes knight d5, and uh, black's getting mated. Or he's losing serious material. Okay, so queen takes c3 was played, and um, very simply, Tal develops his rook onto the d file, threat rook e d1, threatening queen d8 mate. So obviously, uh, this has to be blocked. If bishop d7, rook takes b7, game over. The knight on b8 can't be saved, rook takes d7 is being threatened. Absolutely hopeless. So knight d7 was played in order to block the threat of checkmate on d8. And now, bishop f7 check. King takes... Again, bishop f7 is a, is a move that is in accordance with the principle of maximum activity. You know, a move in the opponent's half of the board. So bishop takes f7, king takes, knight g5 was played, king e8, queen e6, and Tal's opponent resigned. So obviously if king d8, uh, knight f7, check, king, d king c7, queen d6 is checkmate, and if king f8, then queen f7 is check and mate. Okay. So, knowing this principle, although it may not make you a world champion or even a grandmaster, but it can help you find the right moves in many, many different positions, especially in the middle game. This is how grandmasters make the right moves, even in blitz games. The biggest impediment to improving your chess is the lack of application of the base principles of chess. The, the principle of maximum activity is one such base principle. So many players spend many hours studying chess. They study the whole day, they buy books and software, however they never seem to improve. But why is this? Is it because they are not able to put into practice the knowledge? Yes indeed. Most chess books tend to focus too much on knowledge and not enough on its application. After reading a chess book, how often have you been able to improve significantly after reading it? Now I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, it was we're talking about attacking chess. It's an attack. The principle of maximum activity is an attacking concept. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.